I'm so sent over their GS63 VR. This is a gaming laptop that's VR ready, has a GTX 1060 in it, a full desktop chip which is really awesome. It's obviously still slim and light and reasonably portable too which is obviously awesome and we're going to take a look at it in this video so do stick around. So just to give you an idea of the specs, this has an i7-6700HQ, a full desktop 6GB version of Nvidia's GTX 1060, I believe it's slightly underclocked, and you also have 16GB of DDR4 RAM, a 256GB M.2 SSD, and a 2TB hard drive. In terms of I.O., you've got the power button on the right hand side, as well as the 17.7mm thick chassis, USB 2.0 port, Thunderbolt 3 slash Type-C, as well as HDMI display ports and a DC in, as well as Gigabit Ethernet, Kenton Lock, SD card, reader as well as three more uh, or three USB 3.0 ports on the left hand side and headphone and microphone jack. On the front you've got all these status and indi indicator LEDs uh, including caps lock and num lock and you also have a sort of these velvet sort of soft touch material all along the bottom as a sort of heat shield despite this getting very very hot. Now, the keyboard is actually really nice to type on, um, the overall experience is pretty good, the trackpad also has fantastic palm rejection which is great and just feels very nice to use, it's a very high quality trackpad. The main thing for me is that the Windows key is on the wrong side. I know it's a gaming feature but I wish they had just a Windows lock button or something. And for some reason, they still have the power button, uh, the power button logo in the center where the power button used to be, despite it now being on the right hand side. And despite MSI telling me that it wouldn't automatically turn or you know it wouldn't affect anything, I did accidentally turn it off while filming this. So um, yeah, that was fun. The screen is absolutely fantastic, though you can see it from any angle as you can see here, um, and it's just it's just such a beautiful screen to look at. The main thing for me though is that this laptop, despite getting great FPS numbers as you see in a second, uh, hits nine odd degrees uh, while just running you know games unage in heaven and all that sort of thing and that is very very hot um, it's also completely you know untouchable if you're touching the bottom or above the keyboard although credit to cre uh, you know where credit is due MSI did a great job of, th of thermally managing this so that the keyboard is perfectly fine to touch even when the uh, you know GPU is running it at 90 degrees as you can see in terms of actual FPS numbers running it ultra settings on pretty much any game you're easily going to get over 60 FPS you're just about hitting 100 FPS on uh, very high settings in GTA 5 for example uh, and that sort of thing so it is a really impressive laptop and you're hitting 88 FPS in Unigen Heaven which is a lot higher than most so again that's really impressive um, it's just a shame about the temperatures really but uh, yeah otherwise really impressive. So I'm going to say I really do like the laptop the performance is fantastic obviously with basically a detuned desktop GTX 1060 in there it is really impressive and obviously MSI's whole thing of shatter the desktop performance cliche they definitely do that in terms of FPS here you're easily getting 60 fps on ultra settings on pretty much any game at 1080p so um, that's very impressive and obviously you can get more as well so if you're looking to do a sort of investment type purchase here for you know a long-term gaming device then this is definitely a good shout for you now, um, the, I've got kind of two main gripes with the laptop, two main issues with it. The first one is temperatures. Well, the actual noise level was very low and it's easily drowned out by some uh, you know, reasonably quiet music. Um, when I was running Unigen Heaven for about half an hour to see how hot and loud the laptop got, it sat quite you know, stably at 93 degrees Celsius. That's very hot, it's very close to sort of you know, damaging the chip kind of level of performance here, uh, or level of temperatures. Um, and even on a short gaming run for Doom, it hit, it hit up to 87 degrees, so this laptop does seem to get quite hot. Now a fan remap and stuff like that might be able to help that out, especially as kind of updates come out um, and uh, tweaking your own settings in MSI's sort of gaming center might also help with that as well, so do bear that in mind. Uh, and my second gripe is price. Now, uh, at the time of filming, and obviously this depends on where you are and all that sort of stuff and your exchange rate or currency. Um, the price that MSI quoted me for this you know, launch laptop is £1,799. Now that's very, you know, I think that's something like three or four hundred quid more expensive than the last generation of laptops. And because they're starting to put desktop GPUs in there, you're, it's very, very easy to compare a, a laptop to a desktop in terms of the sort of performance you get and the price you're going to pay. 
Now, uh, a quick search on Overclockers UK found this gaming PC with a very nice Fantax N3 Evolve case um, for £1,118, um, which is about £700 less expensive than the laptop. And this features a desktop 6700K, which is obviously a little bit better, and a desktop GTX 1060 with you know same RAM and SSD type specs. And uh, Obviously this one is going to get uh, better temperatures and slightly better performance being you know, desktop versions of things. Um, now obviously there is many arguments to say the laptop has a fantastically beautiful screen, like it's just, it's just amazing, um, obviously built in, you've also got it's portable, obviously has a battery built in and that sort of thing, um, has a keyboard and mouse built in as well, so even if you spend an extra say 200 quid for a monster mouse and keyboard for the desktop version, that's still 500 pounds that you're paying for portability in effect. Um, and obviously that's something that you just need to take into consideration. It's not necessarily a deal breaker, but it is something to consider when you, you know, are looking at the price differences. And if the laptop's just gonna sit on a desk for, you know, 99% of its life plugged into the wall, then you may wanna just pick up a desktop and get better temperatures for less money and a little bit better performance as well. But uh, yeah, other than that, that's my kind of main two gripes. The only other tiny thing, as I mentioned, is the Windows key being on the wrong side. Um, I know that that's meant to be a gaming feature, but like every other gaming keyboard on the planet, they all have FN and Windows lock buttons. So if you just, you know, implement that, that would be great. It means that I don't have to use two hands to turn the volume down, uh, where it should only really take one sort of press of couple keys and that sort of thing so um, yeah that would be really nice and uh, also the uh, kind of bloatware that comes pre-installed and um, there are many many pop-ups that come up for you know would you like to update when uh, MSI Dragon Center have you seen this new feature of this that or the other um, and Norton is, which is just a massive pain um, I wish the, you know some of those things didn't come pre-installed especially Norton but uh, yeah, other than that, it is a very nice laptop. In terms of scoring, we're gonna go for a uh, 3.5 for value for money, but 4.5 for performance. I'm gonna go with around four for functionality and five for style, with 4.5 for Tetra Movie Score and a Guild Award, because it is a really nice laptop. And despite you getting quite hot, you're gonna be gaming on a hard top surface anyway, so it's not necessarily too affecting. And obviously with a little bit of a fan, pre uh, fan tweak, uh, you can probably get that down quite easily as well, so that's obviously nice. And performance, is just fantastic uh, and as I said the price is kind of the, the determining factor really if you are interested in this laptop or not and obviously they do, they do have the GE range which is going to be a little bit cheaper as well obviously a little bit thicker and the main thing is this laptop is incredibly thin and incredibly light so if you are carrying this around with you it's actually really awesome and you don't notice it as much so that's really impressive but um yeah, I guess that's that. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe. And if you're planning on picking this laptop up, please do use my Amazon affiliate link. It genuinely helps me out and keeps these videos, you know, going, obviously, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of that. If you're planning on buying anything else, please do use these sort of general links in the description as well. Um, you know, just your garden shed or anything. Um, I said, please do use those. And, uh, yeah, other than that, feel free to follow us on Facebook and Twitter, especially if YouTube does some of the changes they're planning on doing. Um, it might actually be sort of prevalent to follow us there so that you can actually see some of the videos that are coming out um, and watch them. So, uh, yeah, other than that, I think uh, that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you all in the next one.